They both look pretty cool. I don't know, I, I prefer the pentagram, I guess. That's just my style. No, I'm not satanic. I, I'm actually, I just don't believe in it, period. I grew up religious, like my family made me go to church every Sunday growing up. The older I got, just kind of stopped and thought about it, and I don't know, I just think it's a bunch of crap. I don't like worship the devil. I don't believe in the devil, but I just kind of like have all this stuff. It's kind of like a defiant, I guess, from my growing up, I guess. No, I'm 100% positive, never in my life. I'm pretty sure no one can convince me or tell me something I haven't heard. You can try, but probably won't work out. Scientology, I'd have to go that route. It seems like if I'm gonna pick one, I might as well pick the craziest one and just go with it. I would say alien head, but then that would kind of look like alien workshop, you know? Maybe spaceship or something, I don't know. Tom Cruise, yeah, that'd be a good one too. Or uh, Travolta, some Saturday Night Fever or something. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of losing it. That's where I hold my cigarettes. Losing a little bit of ink. It was a it was a free tattoo. Judas Priest. I like Slayer, Iron Maiden, Creator, Overkill. It's been good so far. I mean, it's fun. Show up and skate, and then get to walk away with some money no matter what. So that's always pretty good. I still haven't made it to the finals on one yet. So I think maybe the first one I was one away from going to the finals. So it's like 11 or something. A lot of people are stoked on Judas Priest. I've seen a lot of strange stuff. I've seen got like just street lurkers laying on their back on the sidewalk, playing with themselves middle of the day, you know? Like, you know, I've seen people just hit up a crack rock whenever. You see that all the time. You see people shooting up, fights a lot, just randomness, yeah. Sometimes it's kind of, it could be funny, you know, depending on what you see, and then sometimes you're just like, oh man, didn't need to see that today. That's just how it is there. Not to ride for Deluxe, but to, when I moved out here, Frank made me do it just to do it. He's like, well, you, you're moving to San Francisco. You have to learn how to bomb hills. Remember when I would stay at the Newell when I first came out, he would just like, all right, we're going out. It'd be like 10 at night. And then he'd just like pick some crazy hill. You got to remember I'm from Oklahoma. It's completely flat. Frank's like, all right, follow me. Don't put your foot down. Pretty much he's just like, hold on, you know? I don't know it was hard getting used to, but you have to at least hold your own on some hills if you live in San Francisco. I don't know, Frank does a pretty good job. He teaches me by example. He's just like, you know, just don't do what I do, and then you'll be good. I think Fred's probably a little bit gnarlier. I don't know Fred that well, so I, it's just from what I've heard, you know. I'll stick with Frank. He, he's doing a pretty good job with me so far. They realize it's important for everyone to get, get along on trips, and they really feel out skaters as, a per, as, you know, as people before they put them on, you know. You just feel connected with the, your teammates more because you know they're rad dudes and they got your back you got their back so one of my first trips or whatever we were going up to uh, I think it was like through Detroit and like Chicago like that area and prior to that we bought a bunch of fireworks earlier on the trip or whatever so the van had a bunch of fireworks we go to this Starbucks or whatever to get coffee before hitting the road and when we're pulling into the parking lot I'm just you know like not really thinking I light a bottle rocket and then kind of like just drop it out the window and it shoots off and it blows up right by this this dude's head or whatever, like pretty close to it, I guess, and random guy, and I guess he was already having a bad day. He was a pretty big guy, and he was just like flipped out, came over to the van. He's like, who the fuck did it? You know, like just going off, who the fuck did it? And then reached in, grabbed the keys out of the, the van or whatever. I think Jim was driving, and like Mickey was maybe shotgun or something. And then I'm like, oh, you know, whatever, I did it, I'm sorry. It was stupid, you know. He basically pulls me out of the van, like opens up the door, pulls me out of the van, and then I'm just standing there looking at him, like waiting for a waiting to get hit or something. And then uh, Mickey comes out to like kind of help me out and then like kind of distracts him a little bit. And then the dudes like, him and Mickey start like going around in the parking lot a little bit, not really fighting, but the guy's kind of like backing away from Mickey. Mickey's yelling at him. And then he's like, oh, I'm gonna go to my car, grab my gun or something. He said some shit like that. And then meanwhile, people inside the Starbucks already called the cops. So they pretty much, they show up right around then, pull guns on the guy and the, the guy that was doing all this was a black guy or whatever and then like the only other black guy with, that was with us was Darrell so the cops pulled the guns on Darrell too so they pulled Darrell to the cop car right next to the guy and then there was a photo I think Abe took uh, and had the cops just pointing the guns with uh, Darrell and then this other guy and I think it was like the intro to the article maybe. I felt so bad about it. Oh, you were the guy that was ripping in the contest earlier. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm not a bum. Because they had paramedics on site. I was like, yeah, Johnny, I'll put my like, ball sack on your head. He's like, you fucking do that on like, your teeth. He caught his hair on fire and burned a hole in his leather jacket that big. That story's going to be really fun if you hear it right now.